step one to hitting the perfect return is the ready position, the way we position our body, and the way that we hold the racket, the grip. Now in general, against most players that you face, you'll want to have your forehand grip ready at the bottom hand, and if you're a two-hander, you'll want your backhand grip ready on the top hand. So it ends up like this. So with my bottom hand, it's my eastern forehand grip, and with the top hand, I'm holding my backhand grip. Now what happens is, if it comes to my forehand, it's very easy. I just take the top hand off and I hit that return. So if it does come to the backhand, I have that top hand already set and the bottom hand slides into my continental grip and I'm ready to then hit that return. And it becomes a very quick motion and this is so important when we're actually facing those bigger servers. Time is off the essence, the more time that we can create for ourselves, the easier those returns will be. Now, if you're a one-hander, you can have the forehand grip ready, and you can have your non-hitting hand holding the throat of the racket, like so. If it comes to the forehand, it's easy. If it comes to the backhand, you have that top hand helping you to grip change into your backhand grip so that you can drive it. And at the same time, we want to have a wide athletic stance so that we're ready to push off to either direction. And also we want to feel like we're able to cover more ground. If I stand upright like this, it's very hard for me to then get into the ready position to push off. Whereas if I'm already in this low center of gravity base, I have my feet quite wide. It's around one and a half to two shoulder widths apart we want to stand. And I'm in this position here. Now I feel like I'm ready to push off quickly to those wide returns. It also gives your opponent the illusion that you're covering a lot of ground. If I'm standing like this, they feel like they have a lot of space to aim into on either side. Whereas when my stance is wider, I suddenly look bigger. I suddenly look like I'm covering more ground, almost like an eagle when they extend their wings. We want them to feel like the court is much smaller than it actually is because we're covering so much ground with our stance. Think about Novak Djokovic when he's returning. He looks so balanced, he looks so ready to push off, and it all starts with his stance, his wide athletic base, which allows him to then push off to those wide serves and cover more of those tough returns. The next step is your swing. Now, very often players struggle on the return because their swing is too big. They try to use their normal forehand and normal backhand swing when returning. And if you're playing someone with a weak second serve, that may work. But if you're playing someone with a big serve and you're trying to time that big swing with their fast oncoming serve, the chances are that you're going to mistime it and hit the ball on side of you or even behind you. So in order to actually create time for ourselves, we have to reduce the backswing. And it all starts by imagining that behind us, when we're returning, we have a wall. Now, if I have a wall and I try and take a big swing, my racket's going to touch that wall. I'm blocked from taking that big swing. So when I'm in my wide athletic stance, if the serve comes to my forehand side, I want to feel that my backswing is minimal. All I'm doing is coiling my upper body with the left shoulder turning. So it's that split step, that body coil, which produces that slight backswing. Now from this position, if I want to meet the ball out in front, it's very easy for me. I just go to the ball and I, it's almost like I'm catching the ball on my strings. This is the same principle on that backhand side. If I'm a two-hander, I go from this ready position, I coil with my right shoulder, I get to this side-on position, I'm ready now to go and meet that ball out in front. And if I have a one-hander, the same principle remains. Ready position, comes to the backhand, take the racket to the side by coiling the right shoulder and go out and meet that ball. What happens is when we coil the upper body, we're storing energy in those major trunk muscles, especially the side obliques. And when we release that, when we uncoil, it produces a lot of power. It's like throwing a heavy medicine ball. If someone gives you a ball and tells you just to use your arms, 
it's very hard to produce power by just this. But if I'm using my entire body, the coil with the upper body, the hip loading, the loading with the legs, now suddenly I'm using the major muscle groups and this is what we want to have on that return. I want to feel like I'm using those bigger muscle groups to produce that power, but also overcome the power that's on that serve. Now, if you face someone with a big serve, you know what it feels like. When the ball hits your strings, it doesn't feel like a tennis ball. It feels like a huge cinder block. It feels like a cement block hitting your racket. And if you're not strong enough, you won't be able to return that ball back in. So I want to use my major muscles to give me that strength to overcome fast serves. And that means I'm loading with the legs, I'm coiling the upper body, and I'm using my trunk and core muscles to overcome that power. If you imagine this wall being behind you, this will limit the backswing, and this will actually create that time for you, which is so important on the return. And you may be wondering what happens on the second serve when I have more time, do I still have that small backswing or can I take a bigger swing? Now the answer is both. You can still have a smaller backswing, but you can move forward and take the ball on the rise. So you're taking time away from the server by taking the ball early. Or you can stay back and you can have that bigger backswing. Now, if you want to chip the return, it's very similar. When we're facing that first serve, we want that wide athletic stance. We want to be holding the continental grip and whichever side it comes to, it's very easy for me now to just chip that return and get it back in play. The swing, once again, when facing those bigger servers is minimal. I'll just take the racket to the side and I'll go out to meet the ball very much like a volley. You don't have a big backswing on the volley. You simply go to the point of contact and meet the ball out in front. And this is the same with those chip or block returns when you're facing those big servers. And the third step is your footwork patterns when returning. Now, if the ball comes to my forehand, I want to be loading on my outside leg. But the initial step is the split step. So I'm timing the split step so that I land just around the point of contact or just after the point of contact when I'm playing those bigger servers. This will then allow me to see where the ball's going I can then push off to either the forehand side or to the backhand side. So if it comes to the forehand, from this position, I've done my split step. I now open up my right foot so it becomes a step out with my right leg. And from here, I can load this leg and I can drive onto my left leg. So it becomes a two-step pattern. Split, right, left. And if it comes to my backhand side, one-hander or two-hander, it's the same principle. I land, I open up with my left leg, and I go left to right. Now this left to right or this right to left on the forehand is crucial. It's called the power step and it's what gives us a lot of control and balance whilst we're making contact. If I time this step at the right moment, I'll be hitting the ball whilst I'm doing that power step. From this position, if it comes to my backhand, I load on this outside leg, my left leg, and I have that power step through the point of contact onto my right leg. So it's left to right. This also allows me to cover greater distances and push off to those wider return of serves. If it comes to my forehand, the same thing happens. Load up on my right leg and then have that power step onto the left leg, which allows me to cover those wide serves on either side. So the power step, work on it and master it. This is one of the keys to having a great return of serve along with the swing. And where should you aim your return of serves? Now, in general, you want to aim across your body line. This means that on the backhand side, I'm always returning back into the middle of the court or to my opponent's backhand. 
And if it comes to my forehand, I'm returning back into the middle of the court or to my opponent's forehand. Once you start going down the line, it becomes higher risk and then the percentages play into the hands of the server. Now, one of the best return of serve strategies is aiming for the feet of the server. When we hit a serve, the most vulnerable position that we're in is when we land. And if my opponent is aiming the ball into my feet, I'm now caught off guard, I'm off balance, and it's very hard for me to deal with those fast returns. This is what Djokovic does so well against the big servers. You see them landing and the return is already back in their feet and they're trying to pick it up and they have no chance. So aiming into the feet of the server is a great way to exploit them when they're off balance. Now, if you're taking that second serve on and you come into the net, so either a chip and charge or a block and coming forward, then you can aim down the line and this is because you're covering the right side of the court. So aiming that approach shot down the line is your best bet. So there you have it, how to hit the perfect return of serve in three simple steps. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. I hope you're going to work on these tips and I hope that you'll be able to break your opponents much more often. If you have enjoyed this lesson, make sure you smash the like button. It really helps us out, helps the channel to grow, but it also helps the videos be shown to more players. And that's what we're all about helping more players and making a difference in the world of tennis. If there are any lessons you'd like to see from us in the near future, leave a comment down below and we'll film the top suggestions. Signing off, Coach Simon from TTT. All the best and see you soon, guys. Take care.